Welcome back. It's Max and enough joking around. In our previous episodes, we've done a lot of building with redstone. We built the multi-item sorter, we built the bamboo farm, but I'm totally done with redstone for this episode. No redstone. Today's episode is gonna be solely focused on building. We're gonna try to create some interesting builds within this world and try to complete some of the projects that we haven't really touched over the previous few episodes. In between episodes, I've been doing some live streams and I've been working on the vaulted ceiling over here for the multi-item sorter. It's actually turned out really, really well and I wanna show you guys. These are vaulted ceilings and are very popular in Gothic architecture. It's one of the things that made Gothic architecture so special in the Middle Ages. We have these pillars that all enter in the center and have the keystone in the center holding up the weight of the roof. I think we really get an idea of the sense of color and scale that I want to go for for some of the interiors within the cathedral itself, although we have a long way to go to decorate the entire thing. I combined these individual sections into sections of two and added this really nice arch, which is hard to see, but there's some frog light arches all the way across in this section. It leads four different panels of things that we can put in here. While on a stream, we decided that it would be really cool to have other builds in the world represented as stained glass windows. I started working on the first one, which will be an Aia diorama. It is looking okay. It's not great. I think that there's definitely some work to be done here, but I think that there's some shape something here. It's looking very simple, but I want to kind of add some clouds and make it look exactly like Aia. We will also have the starter village, the chateau, and then maybe the Gothic cathedral in a stained glass. I added frog lights around the entire outside, which should give the stained glass, which will be the frontmost layer, a bunch of light to light up these builds. Now that is way more like it. I made an underwater scene here, which really adds to a vibrance for this Aia diorama build. I decided to go with the setting sun theme for the background and ocean landscape for the bottom. We have coral, sea pickles, some sugarcane, which I thought looked a little bit more like kelp, uh, sponges, and these twisting vines, which I think make it look underwater-y. I also added these blackstone things, which I think kind of look like squids floating up in the ocean, which I think turned out really cool. I also added some trap doors around the eye just to light up this central area, and it turned out really magnificent. It is missing one thing, however, stained glass. Stained glass will add a really nice stained window look to this build, so I'm going to pop it in now. What a perfect touch. Just behind that stained glass, it makes it look a little faded and a little bit obscured, which really looks awesome in that stained glass look, especially from a distance. I'm super happy with that one, but I think we have three more, but I want to get to those later in the episode. Right now, I want to transition to work on the roof. Continuing with our building theme throughout this episode, I want to work on another major project. The roof is kind of sat incomplete for a while now. I worked on these two sides of the roof, but the main section of the roof is still incomplete. I'm tired of having these flat screenshots and I want to build this build out into three dimensions. I outlined the lines that I want to build within diorite here, although I have not built it out on the other side as well as the other side of the cathedral. I think our roof in the back is going to be a little bit different than these three roofs. I've been grinding a lot and I've used the mud cube a few times to collect a lot of this packed mud in order to build out the rest of this roof. So you're starting to hear the music and I'm gonna build out the two wings of the roof. One cinematic time lapse later and we have the other two sides of the Gothic Cathedral roof. They're both mirrored on each side and will look really good once we add some walls and some decoration and some other things to make it look a little more unique as well as some interesting little spires and patterns that could go all across these roofs. However, I'm really happy that this project's been done. I've been kind of dreading it for a while. This build is starting to get a little more grand and impressive. One problem though, 
We gotta address the buttress in the room. I've been having a lot of mental blockages trying to figure out the buttresses which are part of Gothic architecture. I figured out a very simple design in my creative test world that I'm gonna build here. I think I'm gonna implement that really quickly here just so we can get an idea of what a buttress would look like for this Gothic cathedral. This is the first draft of the buttress here and it's looking really good in terms of the shape. Now, in terms of texturing and detail, we're definitely not even close. It also goes into the roof here, which I kind of like adds a little more depth. But the next piece of the puzzle is that it needs to actually be supporting the roof. So just to add that diagonal line, just so it looks like it's being supported right here and that these things are actually helping out the structure of the building. The problem is that this buttress totally drained my supply of smooth quartz. My options are I can manually mine it out in the nether, ugh, or I can build out a piglin bartering farm, which is powered by a gold farm, but no redstone. That's the rules of this episode. So I think that's gonna have to wait till another episode. I'm gonna work on building out this connection piece right here. Hey, it's a little rabbit. Hello, little friend. I finished the connection piece up here, which is the buttress, and I think it's looking pretty sturdy. I definitely like the shape and it feels like it's really supporting the roof up here. The observant of you might also notice that I changed out the inside for poly polished basalt, and it was not because I ran out of smooth quartz, and it's not because smooth quartz is expensive. It adds a little more texture and detail to this piece of the Gothic cathedral here. Like I said, texturing will definitely come in the future, but I am kind of inspired by adding this structure in that I want to have some sort of archway that's a little bit lower, probably connecting to this section right here. Let me put in that arch and see if I can figure out a cool design for this. <laughs> One chaotic time lapse later, and I did finish that little arch right up there. It is Minecraft, so you can see that I went through a ton of iterations of this design, finally figure out that this was the design that I liked the most. I added the cobbled deep slate on the outside to support this bone block, smooth quartz, iron trap door, and blackstone button structure here, just to connect this buttress a little more to this main section. I also switched out this diorite line for cobblestone and cobble deep slate, which just adds a little more contrast to this build. My plan is to literally copy this and move it right here. So we have a second buttress just a little bit lower. So this line is going to continue all the way to that second buttress. And this one is going to be much lower at this level. I'm pretty happy with this progress. I think once we build out all these buttresses on the other sides of the cathedral, we'll start seeing something very cool. But of course, I'm out of resources. Curse you, smooth quartz. So I think we should work on the second stained glass window underneath the cathedral. It's a few days later here, and I have been busy, as you can see by these farms that have cropped up in the lake. Cactus farm, cocoa bean farm, an acacia tree farm, and a dark oak tree farm. I didn't expect this lake to get so busy, and ideally I wouldn't have to put all my temporary farms down here, but it was because I worked on something over there, and you just saw it. You just saw it flicker for a little bit. Another live stream led to the completion of the second of our stained glass windows, and this is the lighthouse from the starter village. Imagine that that copper is oxidized, by the way. Look at the beauty of this lighthouse. It does have the flickering lighthouse look every so often, and I have built out these two amazing new trees that I am totally blown away by. Acacia slabs plus dark oak fences make these things look really orange and beautiful. I went with the terracotta gradient in this kind of autumn theme. It seemed to work out well with a lot of different plants like azalea leaves, ferns, wheat, potatoes, and some other things like little mushrooms and a campfire. And I think this might be my favorite of the diorama so far. Sorry, Aia. And I like it so much that I think I want to convert the trees in the actual village to this design. Of the two trees here, I have this version, which is a more barren slab version, and this one, which is a little fuller, and it's curving inward towards the lighthouse. And this is made out of a little more stairs and is a little bushier. Once this lighthouse turns blue, I think these trees will really contrast the main central lighthouse, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I did decide a stained glass pattern for this, and I already built it out and tore it down, but I'm gonna go with green and brown stained glass, which explains the cactus and the cocoa bean farm down there. Another one down, and it's time to head over to a new project. Okay, I'm kind of addicted to these buttresses. I did remember that actually mason villagers can trade for quartz, and this might just give us enough to eke out another set of buttresses. If we want to do buttresses for the entire cathedral, I think we will absolutely need some sort of farm. But while we are here, I do want to bring attention to the wall of the world. In the world tour episode, which was our last one, I said for people in the comments, 
comments to let me know where you're from, which either country or state that you're from in order for me to put you on this wall. We had three people comment. We had Lucas is from Denmark. So we will pop the Denmark flag up, get rid of some of these heads. Robert is from South Africa and Juan was from Spain. Let me know where you guys are from so I can put you guys on the wall. It would be really awesome to have all the subscribers all over the world in my builds. While I continue trading for some more quartz to finish out some of those buttresses, I think it's time to head back to the Gothic Cathedral in order to work on the Chateau's stained glass window. I'll meet you guys there. Another stream down, another stained glass window. I just completed the final two stained glass windows here. I'll explain the void in a second. But this is the chateau, and I like this one a lot. This is in a snowy biome that really fits and contrasts the other two dioramas. We have the clock tower that is shrunken down with the same roof gradient that we have in the chateau, as well as a beautiful vine made out of azalea and moss blocks. Since this is a mountain, I decided to go a little simpler with just the snow layers and the stone blocks. But now it's time to discuss the void. This diorama is gonna be for our cyberpunk city build, but I haven't actually built it yet. I've done some primary sketches and built out some some wireframes, but we actually haven't gotten to a point where I'm ready to start the mega build as a whole. Actually, let's head there now. Walking through the sand duper here, just to get to the end portal, and we can see I have made a little bit of progress on the wireframes of the Cyberpunk City. Since last episode, I've added two new buildings. I've added this pink building here, which is looking very interesting, but I'm excited to see once we actually start building out some shapes. And we also have this purple building here, which is just a cylinder. It's, this build is definitely taking more and more shape, but it's not at that level where I'm ready to build it out as a full diorama, as I don't even know what block palette I'm going to use. It's a major, major project, and I'm really itching to get started. But unfortunately, I'm itching for something else. Buttresses. Ah! Run away! I definitely have a buttress addiction. After that diorama, I want to work back on these buttresses a little bit. I'm going to basically copy this shape right here and plop another one right here. These roofs would be pushing against these buttresses that would be held up by the vertical load of these pillars and the caps that would go on top of these buttresses. And that's how it held up the roof in Gothic architecture. So I'm going to basically take this shape and copy it and, uh, what? It's done? Wow, that was pretty easy. It's looking way more imposing and imagine you have another set right back here. I'm still getting a little issues with like the way these things are connecting to the other buttresses. There's some weirdness about it. From a shape and direction standpoint, I think this second one was an awesome addition to the Gothic Cathedral. Yeah, this is looking really powerful and really strong. Details to come. Flying around this thing is feeling really magical and I can't wait to get the roots on top of these. It's also a kind of fun elytra course. I think that's enough buttressing for one day, but I do want to head back to the starter village to work on some additional building projects. Welcome back to the starter village. You can see that the landscape is plagued with these old birch and oak tree designs that really feel uninspired. The birch leaves are orange because I use a texture pack that gives it the fall effect, but I really want to switch it over to the trees that we designed in those stained glass window dioramas. I decided to do this as a voiceover just because this process is super repetitive and there's a lot of trial and error. Starting out in the closer section of the village, I decided to take some of these trees down and convert them to only slabs just to give those trees a bushier and more vibrant aesthetic. I think it's a lot of trial and error and shaving off or adding different sections of the tree that work really well to the overall shape of that tree. You want to keep these trees a little airy and light with the slabs and the air blocks just to keep the perception of depth and that these objects are not solid. They're light and fluid. Also, fences instead of full blocks allows air and light to pass through. One thing about this build that's been annoying me for a while now is that in the dock area, the field is not only on dry soil, but they are also potato seeds, which look a little see-through and have this like weird neon color that I'm not super fan of. So I changed this out with wheat and added another beautiful custom tree. We also had the canal that the bridge went over, which stopped in a dead end, which I wanted to finish up during this project. I decided to fill that out with some of the same load-bearing walls that I did using Lightmatica's random block placer. It was super easy to use and I will be using it in future projects. Underneath the cave, I line the roof with some dripstone blocks, as well as dripstone itself and roots to add to that natural, organic feel. I also added some glow lichen to improve the lighting conditions underneath. I then flooded the entire channel and added kelp and lily pads just to add a natural, organic touch. I then wanted to expand some of the fields that are on the edge of the island. I originally thought I would want to do the entire area as a berry bush, but I thought that was a little too overwhelming, so I replaced it with a field of daisies and actually changed out the dirt for coarse dirt, which I think adds a different color and really
really contrast the yellow of those daisies. I then added a very small watermelon farm. Of course my computer blue screened in the middle of this recording and this tree time lapse was lost, but you get to see the main center point of this village. We have a massive tree that draws your eye up into the corner of the village and contrasts beautifully to those deep blues of the copper, right in between the lighthouse and the main cathedral. I added some thick roots that caress into that valley right in front of the tree that makes it feel like this tree has been here for generations. This big tree adds a really beautiful focal point to the entire starter village and I'm really happy with the way that this entire village transformation turned out. You can see that this is the before and after and these trees feel really inspired and bring a massive amount of life and organics to the starter village. You know it's turned into an awesome project when the shulker monster has started to grow and grow. But good thing we have the cathedral where you can just input all our boxes and it will automatically be sorted. There is one piece of the puzzle that I did not add to the village yet. As Franz is spinning around like a crazy person, we have the moss farm, which is kind of looking black. Although this moss farm is super functional, it's looking really gross in here. All the walls are naturally dug out and the ceiling is even dripping with water. I do want to transform this room as part of the village update. Turn around, close the door and open it again, the moss farm will be totally transformed. Hello, Mr. Frog. I built out this room kind of in a moss theme. We have the azalea leaf ceiling and I decided to use mangrove wood as I haven't really used it before. I made a cave back here which looked really good because I had a baby zombie riding a chicken in here at some point but he did despawn. We also have these chests on the wall that store moss blocks and carpet and seeds and when you flick the lever off it'll all get converted into bone meal. I just started doing some of the cave designs on the outside but I also realized that this room is actually a few blocks away from our frog pond. So down here we have the frog pond and then in that area is the slime farm and up there it's hard to see but that is the dripstone farm. I'm not ready to complete the entirety of the frog pond but this area for the moss farm is definitely done for today. I'm just waiting for this copper to oxidize to that exposed copper state but I think that should be fine. But overall this moss farm build really fits into the aesthetic of the Narnia caves that we have over in the starter village so I'm very happy that we got a build out for this moss farm and I think it's time to start ending the episode. I don't even know what the transition is here. Before we end out the episode here, I do wanna show you this to-do list that we made a few episodes ago. We have a few projects here that we've actually completed and I'm excited that we've made some progress. The automatic storage system is done. We also have the cathedral that while it's not completed, it's also in progress, as well as AIA is 99% done. We just need to remove the dry dock that AIA was built in. So I think that might be a great project for next episode. We also have our end transformation cyberpunk city, which is in progress. Let me actually get some red dye for this. Our cathedral is in progress, as well as our end transformation is in progress. Chateau interior, um, yeah, let's say it's in progress. As well as continuing the spawn tunnels, which is the Narnia tunnels over there, which we were actually working on just now. We just need to pretty up the frog farm and the slime farm and get it all connected within the tunnel system. So that is definitely in progress. We have not worked on a better iron farm or a super smelter, but those are definitely coming. Also a rooted dirt farm would be awesome. We do have this old map here that was taken a while ago, so I think it would be fun if we updated some of these maps. That's looking way more lush and way greener. I'm happy with that progress. Organizing items in Minecraft with this storage system is so rewarding. It's actually kind of insane how many items are required to do a project of that size. And now that I have my soapbox, I really think that Mojang should improve the inventory management of this game. It's getting really, really absurd and really, really abysmal that I need shulker boxes and shulker boxes of items just to build one project. But luckily I have the cathedral, so all I have to do is pop these shulker boxes in my inventory, put them away, and then AFK, for it to sort. We might be here for a while. So I think I'm gonna end the episode here. If you made it all the way to the end, let me know what your favorite project was in this episode and what do you want me to work on in the future. I also have a Discord where you can keep up to date with my streams, short form video content, and when new episodes drop. So with that, I'm gonna bid you adieu and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.